two common types of DHCP attacks exist. One is known as DHCP starvation and the other is known as DHCP spoofing. Let's take a look at each of these. In our first example of DHCP starvation, we have an attacker on the network who sends out a DHCP discover message. Now that DHCP discover message is met with a DHCP response from the server saying, hey, you can use this address. If the client device decides to use it, he will go ahead and send a DHCP request saying, yes, please give that to me. And he will get a DHCP acknowledgement saying the address is yours. That's the normal process for DHCP. But in this case, with our attacker, things are going to go a little bit differently. What's going to happen is, rather than send a single DHCP discover message, that attacker is going to send, let's say, 200 DHCP discover messages. And when the server receives each of those, he's going to look at the source MAC address. Where did they come from? Now that's the trick with this DHCP starvation attack. This attacker is spoofing, remember that was another type of attack, he's spoofing the MAC address in each of these packets that he sends out. So the server now believes that he's getting 200 DHCP requests and he sends 200 DHCP offers back to different MAC addresses. Now at this point he's allocated those addresses. He's not going to give them to anybody else until he hears back on whether the clients want to use them or not. Nobody's going to reply back. And if the spoofing keeps happening and these DHCP request messages keep happening, eventually we use all of the addresses in our DHCP pool. Now when this legitimate client comes on and sends his DHCP discover message, that server looks and goes, well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have any addresses available. And he just doesn't even respond. This real client then does the auto configuration of a 169 dot address and he can't get anywhere on the network because the DHCP server has been impacted by a DHCP starvation attack and cannot serve real users. Now the other type of attack that we see is a DHCP spoofing attack. So we have our real DHCP server, we have a real client, and then we have an attacker that comes onto the network. Now this could be in many forms. This could be a rogue access point that was plugged in. This could be someone running Kali Linux. This could be a router, a little home router that somebody brought in and plugged into the port at their desk. And so what happens is the client sends out a DHCP discover message. Well, before that message, which is a broadcast, could even make it to the DHCP server, this rogue sees it because the rules on a switch are, if it's a broadcast, I flood it out of every port except the one it came in on. So what happens is this rogue DHCP server replies back and the client takes that address, sends a DHCP request, and the DHCP ACK comes back. Now the client has an IP that's not really part of our IP subnet. Well, who's his default gateway? Well, you guessed it. It's this attacker right here. So now what happens? Well, again, just follow the process of the attack now. The client sends traffic to the gateway. It goes to the attacker. The attacker is using Wireshark or TCP dump or whatever other application this attacker might decide to use to capture those packets and store them. But at the same time, he forwards that onto his default gateway who can then forward that traffic on out to the internet or wherever else it may be going. The client has no idea that he's now part of another kind of attack. Now, do you remember what that attack was called? If you're thinking man in the middle, you're correct. So DHCP spoofing attacks spoof that DHCP server and end up leading to man in the middle attacks. One mitigation technique that we might employ to protect against this is called DHCP snooping. This is a feature for Cisco switches. What we do is we set up DHCP snooping on a per VLAN basis. So let's say that these users here are on VLAN 10. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want to do DHCP snooping on VLAN 10. And once we've enabled it, we have to tell it which port we trust to receive DHCP responses from. 
The other ports will be untrusted. So when this client sends out that DHCP request message, the DHCP discover, when that rogue DHCP server gets it and he replies back, that port is not going to forward it because it's untrusted. Additionally, we can configure rate limiting on a port, which will prevent that attacker from initiating a DHCP starvation attack. He won't be able to initiate enough DHCP requests to starve out the address pool. So again, DHCP snooping is the method on our Cisco switches that we would use to mitigate against these attacks. But those are our two attacks, DHCP spoofing and DHCP starvation.